Welcome to the Clarksville Now Candidate Forums for the November 2024 election. I'm Editor-in-Chief Chris Smith, and today we have Tennessee House District 67, which covers most of the city limits of Clarksville. The candidates were given the questions ahead of time so that they can prepare. The candidates in the race are Jamie Dean Peltz and Representative Ronnie Glenn. Uh, welcome, Mr. Glenn, and let's get started. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your qualifications to serve in the General Assembly? So thank you. Uh, first of all, Chris, thank you for having me, and thank Cl- thank Clarksville now for putting this together. Uh, for 23 years, you know, I've served my country, uh, and one of the things that that time taught me was respect, integrity, selfless service, and I've used that as the backbone of what I believe to be how I've legislated so far. Uh, one of the things that I was able to do uh, when I first got there for the folks of District 67 was. Uh, put a bill together that allowed our teachers, uh, our retired teachers, to come back to work without it affecting their pension. That was to help us to ease our uh, uh, shortage of teachers within the uh, school system. Uh, I also uh, was able to uh, work with Middle Tennessee Boys and Girls Club because I know that is something we've struggled to get here in Montgomery County was a Boys and Girls Club. Uh, So I spent the time doing that, and I can officially say in June, uh, 2025, we will officially have our first Boys and Girls Club. So I've worked hard to make sure I have accomplished those things. All right. Thank you. Um, let's talk about some of the issues in the race. Probably Clarksville's biggest growing pain has been with our highway infrastructure, and most of the problems are on state highways. What would you do to ensure that we get adequate state highway funding? So one of the things that I, I want everyone to know is that um, – Unfortunately, for 16 years, we've allowed the GOP supermajority to uh, run our state house. And in that time, what we've done is we've had money to work on our infrastructure. Uh, we recently gave away $1.6 billion to out-of-state corporations. Uh, that $1.6 billion could have expanded that third lane down I-24. Uh, it could have finished. It could have expanded Ross v. Road so that our kids could get to and from school safely. Uh, So we have money. The problem is we're using the money in all the wrong ways. Uh, One of the things that I've been able to do uh, while I was in the legislature is I was able to secure money for District 67. What I was able to do was secure over $12 million that allowed us to uh, build, to to work on our sidewalks. Uh, As you might know, if you go down Peaches Mill Road, they're rebuilding, they're finishing up the sidewalks. Uh, we just secured another $8 million that's going to continue to work in New Providence, uh, down Riverside Drive, uh, and all of District 67 uh, to ensure that sidewalks and signage is done. So the money is there. Uh, we just have to go in and make sure that we're talking to the right folks. Uh, another thing that I was able to do while I was there is as soon as I got to uh, the legislator, uh, I called and I got to the bottom of why the project at MLK as well as uh, MLK and Madison had stopped, as well as Whitfield's drop road. Once I got to the bottom of it, I was able to contact the people I needed to contact. And within six months, those both of those projects were back on track. And as you can go down either one of them, they're back. They're, they're almost none. So uh, I've done the work that I said I was going to do. Uh, and I'll continue to do that work, and I'll continue to work with TDOT to ensure we are getting our fair share. But, again, we can't give away $1.6 billion and do that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Tennessee, as you know, has banned access to abortion, but there have been calls to allow for some exemptions. Do you support any exemptions to the state abortion ban, and why or why not? Absolutely, I, su- I support that. Again, le- le- when we think about our GOP supermajority who's been in charge for 16 years, what we've seen in those 16 years is a constant, constant takeaway of rights. And this one right here is one of the most extreme uh, takeaways that we can imagine. We're taking away the right of a woman to make a choice. Uh, we have no business in the, doc- in, in, in the private business of any woman, just like no one has the business in my private business or your private business. So this idea that we're going to not allow any uh, abortion of any kind, you know, I have granddaughters who are 16, 14, 15, and the thought of them being raped or attacked or anything like that, and the fact that they wouldn't be able to get the care they need and have to deal with that, 
it actually makes my blood boil. And, and I try not to use that word because I know it's such a harsh word, but the thought that no woman has a right to her own body, a 10 year old, a 12 year old raped by someone who uh, took advantage of them has no choice in this society, in this state, uh, to live a, a full life of what a child should live because of our extreme laws. So, yes, I, I believe a woman has every right to her body, just like we as men have every right to our bodies. Thank you. Um, well, Governor Bill Lee's school voucher program died in the last uh, session. Um, it's likely to come back up again this time around. Do you support uh, school vouchers or school choice, and uh, why or why not? So, so th- there's been a misconception about the school vouchers. Uh, it's not a school voucher. Uh, it's, it, you know, they use the, fa- the fancy word uh, parent choice. What this really is is about class warfare. Uh, what, it's not a parent choice. Parents have a choice right now. If I want to take one of my kids or my grandkids to a private school, I can do that right now. I, it, I don't need a voucher to do that. That can be done right now. What this voucher does is it actually creates class warfare. Uh, it gives money to, it gives taxpayers dollars to private institutions that have no accountability. They have no accountability to the state and no accountability to the parents. That money would be used to line their pockets. That's what private institution does. So this idea that we're going to take state dollars and, and give it to private institution millionaires and, and, and organizations like that is ludicrous. It makes absolutely no sense. And this ideal of trying to change the word to say it's parents' choice, no, it's school choice because that school, that private school, actually has the choice whether they want to accept your child or not. If your child has an IEP, that school can deny your child. If your child had a couple of uh, bumps in the road along the way in school, maybe they got in trouble a couple of times, if that school decides that that child is is, is somehow a threat to them, they do not have to take that child. So how does it become a parent's, uh, a parent's choice if the school has a right not to accept them? So, you know, don't be tricked by the fancy word of parent's choice. It's school's choice. It's about a, filling the money of a private institution with taxpayers' dollars with zero accountability. So, no, I will be voting down any attempt to, to put vouchers in any of our schools. Right. Thank you. Um, are there any other issues or closing comments that you'd like to discuss? Yeah, thank, thank, again, thank you for having me, and thank you for uh, Clarksville now for putting this on. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. That's not what we need to be doing. We have continually for 16 years since the, had the GOP supermajority in our state out. We've had a supermajority come from Clarksville. Our delegation is considered a supermajority. And what have we gotten out of that? We have our infrastructure that is failing. We have schools that are less safe. We're giving away billions of dollars to corporations that's not even in the state of Tennessee. We have more problems than we've ever had in Montgomery County, District 67. So we do not need to continue down this road of sending supermajorities to the state capitol. We have to make a choice and we have to make a change because this is insanity. And if we want to make a difference, then we have to be the difference. So I would say to all Clarksvillians, it's time to turn the page. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Glenn, for joining us today. And um, thank you for stepping up as a community leader for District 67. A reminder that Election Day is November 5th and early voting begins on October 16. Be sure to vote.